All right, welcome to another episode of the Middle-Aged Metalhead. It's the first week of January 2023, so Happy New Year, everybody. And first week of January also means that it's time for the annual Metal Tag. So this is Metal Tag 2023, originally started by the Rock Scout, who uh, puts together 20 questions every year. This is the third year that he's uh, been doing it, second year that I'm uh, taking part in it. And it's a really cool way to uh, show off bits of your collection and maybe even just refresh my own memory about some of the stuff that I, uh, I have here that uh, I haven't gone back to in a little while. So... Thank you, Scott, for putting this together year on year and a lot of fun to do and hopefully a lot of fun uh, for you when you're watching this as well. So let's get started with the first question, which is a false start album or an album that you struggled with at first but grew to like. So for me, that's Dark Throne, Transylvanian Hunger. Now, I had um, heard Soulside Journey back in the back when it came out and uh, love that album, still uh, love it. It's still my favorite Dark Throne album. And immediately after Soulside Journey, the next one that I heard uh, maybe a year or so later was Transylvanian Hunger. And I could not comprehend it, right? Uh, I had no idea what black metal even was. I didn't understand what was happening here. And uh, it just left me with a what the fuck kind of feeling and uh, it just actually took a long long time for me to get my head around uh, Transylvanian Hunger and uh, really uh, all of those early Dark Throne black metal albums and it was only after I'd heard uh, Marduk and Immortal and then came back to this that I started coming to grips with this but yeah false start album first question Transylvanian Hunger next up uh, an album with war theme or lyrics. So for this, uh, the easy pick, of course, was uh, Bolt Thrower or Sodom, but um, going slightly differently. This is the legendary Warfare Noise compilation from Cogumelo Records in Brazil. So there's your war theme right there with the cover, with the knights holding on their weapons, sitting on their horses, and you've got uh, essentially a few songs each from Shakal, Mutilator, Sarcophago and Holocausto and uh, yeah this is the war themed album for question number two. Next up most influential metal musician to you of the last 10 years for me that's Justin Detour uh, or maybe it's pronounced Justin Dittore, I'm not too sure, drummer, vocalist, uh, songwriter. This year alone, he's been on the terrific Summerlands album, Dream Killer. He's uh, been playing with Magic Circle, three albums with them. And he's also got a fantastic Death Doom band called Innumerable Forms, who also released a terrific album this year. So that's uh, Justin Detour. Next up, Band on your to-do list, question number four, or rather, band on your to-c list, that's got to be Void Void, uh, one of my all-time favorite bands, and uh, yeah, uh, it's been on my bucket list for years now, and hopefully one day uh, we'll get to see them live. Question number five, an album that energizes you. This was uh, pretty simple. Demolition Hammer, Epidemic of Violence, absolutely destructive death thrash. Oh, just a terrific, terrific album. Question number six, Big Freeze. Show a snow or ice album cover, song or lyric. This one was actually... Um, quite difficult. It took me a while to um, get something that would fit this particular question and hopefully this does the trick. This is Arkham Witch with their excellent On Chrome's Mountain album with uh, all the ice covered peaks and whatnot. Really good um, Doom, Hard Rock, Stoner vibes, really really catchy riffs, lots of good songs. And uh, 
next up question number seven a song title with royal ties this one also took me a while to figure out and it's a bit of a cheat because i showed the same record um, on last year's metal tag as well that's sabotage hall of the mountain king and song two on side b of course is the title track hall of the mountain king Next up, question number eight, a predominantly green album cover. From 2022, one of my absolute favorites of the year, um, the new album from Japanese black metal band, black metal avant-garde, progressive, call them what you will, Sai. This is Shiki. And look at that, just terrific cover art. And predominantly green with a whole bunch of different shades. Next up, an album released in 2021 that you bought but have not listened to this year. So this one is The Stone, Kosternitz. I really loved this when it came out. Uh, bought it, uh, played it a lot. Um, in 2021. It was one of my favorite albums of the year as well. Uh, Eastern European melodic black metal, I guess you could call it. And uh, last year, I even got a couple more albums of theirs on uh, vinyl. But for whatever reason, I just never went back to Kosternitz last year. Still a terrific album and well worth checking out if you like uh, melodic black metal. Next up, question number 10, best find of 2022, old or new? So I was in uh, New Delhi a few months ago, I think it was in uh, October, and I'd gone to a record store there, and in the used section, I find this Metallica in Vertigo you will be, which is essentially a bootleg soundboard recording of their gig from uh, February 5th, 1990 in Birmingham. And that's the song list. And it was uh, really, I mean, um, record shopping in India is quite an expensive hobby. And uh, this one was, for whatever reason, it was really, really cheap. And it was just lying there. And yeah, I picked it up uh, because I, you know, this is classic at a uh, Metallica pretty much, which I absolutely love. And it also has uh, a demo of uh, One, which is one of my favorite uh, Metallica songs. But when I got around to playing it, um, it's an incredibly sloppy show. I mean, uh, Lars, for whatever reason, is oh well we know why but he's all over the place um headfield is trying to play lead guitar uh, and feeling miserably the, the songs just sound like an absolute train wreck even though the recording itself for a bootleg uh, live album is pretty decent you know it's not too bad but uh yeah uh, i just have a whole lot of fun listening to this and of course later on i found out that uh I really got it for a steal because uh, it's not allowed for sale on Discogs and uh, people on other social media sites seem to be asking for ridiculous amounts of money for this. But uh, yeah, if you're a Metallica fan and if you get this for cheap, it's just a really nice, nice piece to have. And also anybody watching, if you were at the show in uh, at the Birmingham NEC, February 5th, 1990, Please tell me in the comments what this show actually sounded like, or rather what the band actually sounded like. So that's uh, one of my coolest finds for the year, Metallica's bootleg recording in Vertigo You Will Be. Next up, um, question number 11, new band album discovery of 2022. That's the new side project from Autopsy's Chris Reifert, Static Abyss. Or Static Abyss uh, and their debut full length, Labyrinth of Veins. That's basically, um, it's just Chris Reifert and new bass player for Autopsy, who also used to play for 
this legendary sludge band called Brain Oil, although thanks to a brain fade, I've completely forgotten his name, but it's just the two of them. And this is sort of punky, grindy, sludgy death metal, and just a lot of fun. It says, I actually like this better than the new autopsy. So, Static Abyss, uh, Labyrinth of Veins, check this out. Next up, question number 12, an album sold to you by a song. So, when I've been listening to this band called Sanhedrin for a few years now. The first two albums were really good, classic heavy metal. So, I was looking forward to the new album, which came out last year. And on first listen, the first uh, four or five songs really didn't grab me at all when I was listening to it on uh, iTunes. And then the song called Heroes End kicked in pretty much at the end of the album, and it blew my mind. Like classic, classic Dio worship. And that pretty much uh, sold me on the album. You know, I will put a link in the description or maybe uh, up there uh, to the song. It's just a fantastic song, and over time, this, this album's really, really grown on me where uh, today it's one of my favorite albums from last year. Sanhedrin, uh, Lights Out, the song is called Hero's End. Next up, uh, question number 13. Most anticipated album of 2023. For me, it's got to be a new one from Dark Angel. Um, I was really, really excited when Hoagland quit Testament and uh, announced that he was going back to Dark Angel, and I am really hoping for a new album in 2023. Hope that actually happens, because what this one, Time Does Not Heal, came out in 1991, I think. So it's uh, 31, 32 years since of uh, silence from the band, and... Yeah, a new Dark Angel album in 2023 is going to be fantastic. Next up, 23rd album on your shelf. So the 23rd album, uh, I didn't pick it up from the shelf. I looked at my Discogs uh, catalog and this is what turns up. Anthrax, uh, their very first album, Fistful of Metal. And... There is, this is my favorite Anthrax album. I know I'm probably in the minority here, but there's a certain um, spirit, energy, a feeling of unbridled joy and enthusiasm in these songs that somehow I feel like the band never uh, were able to replicate later on. You know, they may have uh, become better musicians, but there's something about the energy of this album that really just puts a big smile on my face and Neil Turbin's vocals as well. Right, uh, Anthrax, Fistful of Metal, number 23 on my shelf. Next up, question number 15. Last album that has gone into your collection. This came in on the 21st of December, Typo Negative, uh, Dead Again, a brand new reissue by Nuclear Blast. And uh, one of my favorite albums by the band, I'd say. Well, actually, I pretty much love everything that these guys did. But, uh, yeah, The Dead Again just has some absolutely fantastic songs. And uh, also just realized uh, I could have shown this for uh, a predominantly green album cover as well. So, but yeah, last one in my collection, most recent one in my collection, Typo Negative, Dead Again. Question number 16, a random pull from your collection. So let's pull something out and hopefully it will be metal. And Okay, opprobrium beyond the unknown. Right now, this band was... Um, Originally based out of Brazil, I think, and they were called Incubus. And, of course, uh, just a terrific Death Rash uh, album again. Uh, they needed to change the name because of that uh, alt-rock band, which also 
was called uh, Incubus, and uh, these guys had to change the name, but heard this on uh, cassette uh, when I was in my teenage years, and finally got this on, uh, got the reissued uh, vinyl, I think sometime last year. So yeah, random pull from my collection, Opprobrium, Beyond the Unknown. So number seven, next up, number 17, a uh, band artist you discovered through social media. So um, this was actually from one of the many WhatsApp uh, groups that I'm on that's mainly for music. And uh, there was a lot of buzz around this band uh, locally. They're locally based out of Bangalore, India. And that's Man Eating Orchid and their new album, which is called Hive Mind. Now, what these guys do is basically um, sort of a noise rock, uh, hardcore, math rock kind of thing. And it is very, very good. Heavy, abrasive, um, technical, I guess, progressive, you could say. But just a really, really good band and album. Uh, I'll put a link uh, to their band camp in the descriptions. Check them out if you haven't. That's Man Eating Orchid and their new one from uh, last year. Hive mind. Next up, question number 18. Where do you see your collection progressing in the next five years with uh, regards to price of music going up and things like that? And uh, to be honest, this is a really interesting question because I've been thinking about this as well. Because the price of uh, vinyl and CDs for that matter is constantly going up. And sitting in India, uh, getting stuff in from um, from anywhere in the world basically attracts a custom charge of uh, 43%, right? And that's not just on uh, the product, but also on shipping. So if I'm spending, let's say, 50 pounds ordering from a distro in the UK, and once it lands here, I'm paying customs fees of a uh, around about 20, 22 pounds on top of the 50 that I already paid. And things are getting uh, really expensive. And buying locally from local distributors is sometimes works out well, but uh, the bigger distributors here, uh, they charge an arm and a leg, you know, especially for um, um, CDs and uh, albums from smaller labels for whatever reason that is but so yeah over the next five years i think my purchasing is definitely going to come down i've also reached uh, a point where i have a lot of uh, stuff that i listen to once or twice and then it goes into uh, a shelf and i may not pull it out for a few months you know so, yeah, the idea is to spend more time uh, listening to what I have and uh, possibly less time and money on uh, getting new stuff. I still need a few uh, what I would call grails to really just uh, wrap up my collection. So I will still be buying, but probably a lot less in the coming years. Let's say at least that's what I'm thinking right now. But, well, you guys know how it is. Hopefully it works out, yeah. Next up, um, question number 19. A new release you didn't buy this year based on price alone. There were a lot of them. Especially um, newer albums. There were a lot of albums that uh, I just bought on Bandcamp digitally and uh, didn't bother buying either the CD or the vinyl because... It was just getting too expensive. But the one thing that, um, I guess, the one reissue that I really was interested in was um, Iron Maiden's 40th anniversary reissue of Number of the Beast, which I think released as a three vinyl uh, edition. And uh, that was something I would have really liked to own, but um, I think it was coming up to close to about 45 pounds plus shipping. And like I mentioned, plus customs once it gets here from the UK. And uh, yeah, it would have cost me uh, close to 70, 75 pounds. And I was like, 
fuck it, you know, that's not happening. So gave up on that. So that was one thing. But yeah, uh, there were a lot of albums that I just couldn't afford. And finally, question number 20. A song that doesn't belong. The song that lets an album down. Okay. For me, this was my first introduction to heavy metal back in 92. I think I was 13 uh, in 92. Yeah, I was 13 years old. And uh, Maiden's Fear of the Dark was basically my gateway drug for into heavy metal, right? Till then, it was uh, hard rock. It was my dad's record collection. It was, uh, you know, classic acts like Deep Purple, Alice Cooper, uh, Sabbath. Uh, Guns N' Roses, I was a huge Guns N' Roses fan and uh, this was what uh, moved me towards proper proper heavy metal and to this day I absolutely adore this album you know, more uh, sentimental reasons it's not my favorite Iron Maiden album but I will always look back on this and play this with uh, a lot of fond memories attached to it, but on side B on the vinyl, the very last song, Weekend Warrior. What a shit show. I mean, God, I cannot deal with this song. It is just such a terrible, terrible song, obviously, in my opinion. So, hardcore Iron Maiden fans, uh, I hope you're not offended, but God, what a terrible song. I know it's supposed to be about football hooliganism or something like that, which I also can't relate with. But uh, the song itself, the vocal lines, that chorus, it just uh, really uh, pisses me off. You know, and it's sandwiched between uh, Judas Be My Guide, which I think is one of the most underrated or overlooked uh, Iron Maiden songs, and of course, uh, Fear of the Dark. And between those two songs, you've got this, you know, this terrible, terrible song called Weekend Warrior. So, that was it for my 20 questions for Metal Tag 2023. Thank you, Scott, the Rock Scout, for putting this together year on year. A uh, lot of fun doing this. Um, leave a comment. Uh, tell me what you thought about the video. Tell me about some of these picks. Uh, like the video if you did like it, uh, subscribe to the channel if you like what you see. Uh, have a great one, happy new year again and stay safe, stay metal.